All right, here inside the Media Center with Brooke Henderson. For those on the Zoom call here, I just ask that you please utilize the uh, chat function to let me know that you have a question so that we'll be able to call on you. I'll just kick it off here because I know a lot of people want to ask about your excitement, but welcome back as defending champion. What's it like to be back at this tournament? Uh, you know, I love this event. It's so fun and so unique and to be able to play with the celebrities. I look forward to it every year. And so, you know, to come back this year and be defending champion, it's definitely a different and cool feel. And, you know, I'm just really excited to tee it up on Thursday. We had Marty in here earlier who held you in high regard as he does a lot of the LPJ tour players out here. What was it like winning this event in particular and kicking off your season last year like that? Uh, yeah, you know, I have a lot of fun playing with Marty. Uh, I was able to play with him one round last year as well, and he was, ended up being the champion. So it was pretty cool to hold a trophy with Marty Fish, <laughs> you know. So it's just a really unique and exciting uh, week. And, you know, I just talked to Marty actually just a few minutes ago, and he's obviously an amazing tennis player, and then also he's an incredible golfer. So just to see how talented all these celebrities are and what they do, and then come out on the golf course and hit good shots, it's, um, it's really cool for us. All right, I think I'll open it up because I think people are itching to talk to you. I'll open up here in the room first. If you'd like to go first with the microphone in front of you. If you have any questions. Mike Brodsky, Florida National News. Uh, you've obviously played in this tournament a number of times. Have there been any celebrities that made you feel starstruck or flummoxed when you were uh, paired up with them? Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Almost every year, I get uh, at least you know a hand or at least a couple people that I'm pretty nervous on that first tee, but. Um, a few years ago, I played with Vince Carter, and I said to myself, I can play in front of Vince Carter. I can play in front of anybody. <laughs> so after that, um, it's been a little bit easier. But, you know, there's just so many amazing people, and they're also so talented at what they do. So to come out here and play a round of golf with them is just a lot of fun and, you know, learning from them. And they ask us questions as well. So I feel like it's just a really... Uh, a great week and I think the fans really enjoy coming out to a golf tournament but also you know seeing these other pros in, in a different element. You, you've been on tour for a while you always I, I imagine have an approach to the season opener is it any different for a celebrity tournament and what's the approach this week coming back as the defending champion? Yeah you know this is a, a great way to start out the year it's an amazing atmosphere it's really fun there's concerts three nights of the week um, big parties and it's just a little bit more chill and it's great vibes and it's a great way to kind of start out the year and you know there's only I think 43 LPJ tour players uh, this year so it's a smaller field and you know if you can get off to a fast start um, you can get a high finish. With this course, we know Lake Nona is a, is a difficult course, but also with this weather, it was just raining a couple minutes ago with the temperatures going up and down. Just how difficult are the elements in this course as a whole? Uh, this is a very challenging golf course. It, it is a lot of fun to play, especially if you're hitting it well. It can be a lot of fun, um, but you really have to know where you're going and you kind of have, a, have to have a strategy going in. Um, but with the weather, the way it looks the rest of the week, you know, with pretty cold temperatures and windy and, and possible rain as well, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a lot of skill to navigate. Um, you need some good bounces and you're going to have to be tough because it's not going to be easy. Can you talk a little bit about the goals that you've set for yourself on this upcoming LPGA Tour? Uh, yeah, you know, winning this event last year was a huge boost to my confidence, and I've always wanted to win um, at this event. So that that was really big. And then, you know, uh, the rest of the year, I maybe didn't play quite as well as I would have liked. So, you know, coming into 2024, I'm excited to get it started again and, you know, hopefully um, lower my scoring average a little bit, and which will hopefully put me in contention uh, more times throughout the year on the weekend. And that's all you really want is an opportunity to win or an opportunity to be great. Brooke, you're often uh, one of the more positive players out here. How did, you know, after a year where you won out here really quick, I know it didn't really maybe meet your standards, but it was a pretty solid season overall. How did you reset um, coming into this week, this week and this season? Uh, yeah, you know, it was a super fun way to end the year um, with CME, which is always a great event, and then to play Grant Thornton and to have Corey Connors as my partner. Um, you know, we really gave it a run there on Sunday on the final rounds, and we ended up finishing second. So it was kind of a, a great way to start the off season, 
And, you know, it was pretty short off season, so I didn't really do as much as I would normally. But, you know, it was nice to rest a little bit, um, prepare and, and practice for this year. And like I said, I'm just really pumped up to be back here at Hilton Grand Vacations and to be playing with the celebrities and playing an amazing golf course like like Lake Nona. I know it's a really short off season for the LPGA Tour, but what were you really fine tuning working on, maybe mentally and physically, as you looked ahead to 24? Um, yeah, you know, I put in some new irons um, late last fall, and I really loved them a lot. So just continuing to work, um, being a little bit more consistent with the iron play, but they've made a big difference in my game. And then I also changed my fairway woods and driver as well, and my putter. <laughs> so it's been a really big change the last you know two months, um, but all very positive, and I feel like they're really gonna enhance my game. So hopefully I can you know start off uh, putting them to good use this week and, and throughout the rest of the season. Last one for me. What, what does what mentally goes into really having a fresh bag now, <laughs> having a brand new bag? I know um, Taylor made's been newer for you as well, but having to switch everything out, like what what goes into that mentally, uh, trying to get ready for a tournament like this where you're defending? Yeah, you know the stuff that they came out with is just so good that I it was really easy uh, I and mean, quick change and. Um, you know, I love being a part of Team TaylorMade. I feel like it's been a great change for me, and you know, being alongside other amazing athletes uh, has been pretty cool. And you know, I feel like my game's in a pretty good spot right now. And you know, new equipment and a new season. There's a lot of positives, and you know, hopefully, um, we'll see some positive change when I tee it up on Thursday. I know John has a question on the Zoom. If you'd like to unmute yourself. What's up, Brooke? How's it going? <laughs> good, John. How are you? I'm good, thanks. Um, I guess my I have a couple questions for you. My first question is: You spoke uh, towards the end of last season about how you know you won this tournament last year, and then I mean you didn't win again. How did it set the tone over the course of the year that you started with a win? Like, how do you go from a win and keep up that high level of play? Uh, yeah, you know, I feel like with golf, it's it's a roller coaster. You know, there's lots of highs and lots of lows, and you kind of just have to continue to ride it out and, and be patient. Um, starting out with a win here last year, definitely a huge high. Um, and then I did have some lows throughout the, the year, but, you know, I feel like near the end of the season, I was starting to climb my way back up. Um, the second place finish at Grant Thornton um, was really fun, playing with the PJ Tour guys. And, you know, I just started to see a lot of positives near the end of the season. So just tried to continue that on through the off season. And, um, you know, I'm excited to be playing here this week, um, playing next week as well. A couple weeks off and go to Asia, which I always really look forward to playing those events over there as well. Uh, you mentioned to me before, and you alluded to it, obviously you've got a whole bunch of new clubs, but I know you're particularly excited about your driver. Uh, what is it about it that you like? Uh, so I did a, a shoot with TaylorMade in November, I guess, and I hadn't hit the driver, and I had to use it that day for um, some photos, and I used it on the range, and I was like, wow, I love this. So it went immediately into my bag, and it was been such a, a great change, and I've gained a little bit of distance, and I feel like I'm hitting it a lot straighter, which gives me uh, a lot of confidence moving forward. For a, uh, a bad golfer like me, uh, what immediately appeals about a driver like that? It sounds like it had an instant impact for you. Yeah, for sure. Um, consistency, forgiveness, um, I think it is better than the previous stuff I was using. I feel very confident with it. And as I mentioned, you know, hitting a little bit further, distance has always been very important to me. I'm pretty short, sure. so it's nice to, you know, maximize, um, you know, all I can do. Um, so if a club gives me a couple more, Yards, I'm definitely going to take it, uh, especially since I had to go down to 46 inches two years ago from the 48-inch uh, legal limit. So anytime I can try to gain a couple yards back, I'm all for that. Cool. Thanks, Brooke. Thanks, John. Adam, if you'd like to unmute yourself. Sounds good. Hey, Brooke. Hey, Adam. Um, <laughs> quick question about sort of the schedule and 2024 as a whole, obviously, um, you know, the Olympics are, are on the schedule this year, the majors, of course, the CP Women's Open, of course, as well. When you look at the schedule, you know, you've won so many times on the LPGA Tour, but when you think time for the majors, time for the Olympics, and I got to get up for those big events, how do you kind of compartmentalize the week in and week out effort on the LPGA Tour versus getting up for the for the big events? 
yeah, you know, it's a very busy schedule this year, which is really exciting. And I'm really looking forward to the opportunity to play in so many different events and some different events like the Olympics, you know, it only comes every four years. So, and it's a great opportunity to go and represent your country. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of uh, exciting events, you know, the British Open, AGI Women's Open being played at St. Andrews, uh, which is like a dream come true to be able to go play at the home of golf. Um, the women's P KPMG, women's PGA, going back to Sahali, where I won in 2016. So there's a lot of weeks that um, I feel like I'm, I'm really excited for. So it is going to take a little bit of planning and, and scheduling to make sure that I can um, I try my best efforts to be peaking for some of those, you know, top events in the middle of the summer. Um, but, you know, I think I'm, I'm just really excited for the opportunity to be playing week in and week out against the best in the world. And, you know, our purses continue to go up. We're playing great golf courses. So it's just a lot of fun to be out here. I know it's only January, but fast forwarding to December, that'll be the 10th anniversary of you turning professional. Do you ever allow yourself away from kind of the week in and week out grind of the LPGA tour to maybe realize and kind of zoom out from, from that and, and think about the people you've inspired or the accomplishments that you have had over the last 10 years? Uh, you know, I think perspective is a great thing. Um, and being able to step back every once in a while and, you know, just, um, be grateful for how far my team and I, we've come, um, and then also, you know, to get back into the moment and see what we can do in the future. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. This will, I guess, technically be my 10th season on the tour. Um, so it's gone by really, really fast. And I hope that I have inspired and, and motivated the younger generation to, you know, pick up the game of golf or, you know, just chase and pursue, pursue, um, whatever is in their hearts and whatever they, they dream to go after. So, um, you know, it's been a lot of fun for me and, you know, hopefully the, the best is yet to come. Awesome. Thanks. See you in a few days. All right. We'll go to Bob and then wrap with Kent. So Bob, please first. Oh, there we go. Hi, Brooke. How are you? Good, Bobby. Uh, how are you? Thank you. <laughs> uh, two quick ones for you. One, uh, what's going on with the thumb wrist thing that you got going there? Uh, oh, yeah. I'll let you do that one first. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've kind of had a bothersome thumb for a long time now, since 2017, um, off and on. But last year, I guess in the middle of the summer, it started to bug me a little bit more. Um, so I've been, you know, taping it not consistently, but every so often. So, you know, trying to strengthen and trying to, you know, help it out so that it won't be as bothersome, but as of right now, the, the tape does a good job and, you know, just hopefully won't be as painful in the future. Okay. Second one, as you taped that big uh, Christmas commercial for uh, TaylorMade, yeah. uh, I'm assuming that's the thing you did in November, and I'm not sure. I know sometimes they finagle a few things, but were all the golfers in one place at one time? And if not, how many of you were there? And, and I guess the question is, did you spend any time with Tiger if he was there? Um, yeah, we were all there together, um, which was really cool. And I sat beside Tiger at like the breakfast, and that was pretty cool for me. Uh, but yeah, I know to be in the company of all those talented players, um, it really means a lot to me. And uh, I feel like I was very inspired and motivated uh, to be in their company. You was that the first time you spent some time with Tiger? Um, actually, last year um, I met him for the first time at the TaylorMade shoot. So it's been a couple times now. Okay, thank you. And off to Kent. Brooke, is there a, a technical medical diagnosis for what's going on with your thumb? And, and how does one do rehab for a thumb injury to make it stronger? Uh, yeah, so I've just been seeing the LPJ physios. Um, they've been doing a really great job and just trying to, I mean, I don't really know the technical stuff, but, you know, they're just trying to do different things to, to loosen it up and and make sure that there's not too much stress going on it. But, you know, obviously being a golfer, there's a lot of repetitive <laughs> motions. Um, and so there can be a lot of stress on it. So over the off season, I went a few weeks where I wasn't practicing as much and, and my thumb was great. Um, but no, as the season has gotten closer and I've been practicing more, um, it started to come back a little bit. So, you know, hopefully it won't last forever. Um, but I think, you know, while I'm playing, I'll probably have to deal with it at least a little bit. Are there any particular parts of the game where you feel it more than others? Uh, definitely the long game. So uh, like full swings, you feel it more. And this is a really short off season coming off the Grand Thornton Invitational. You talked about coming into year 10. 
what's it like to manage such a short off season and then roll into the next year? Um, yeah, it has been really short, um, but I'm just hoping that I can keep the momentum that I had near the end of the season and bring it right into 2024. That's kind of the goal. But, um, you know, it, it's been fun. I actually in September last year, I took five weeks away from competitive golf uh, in September and October. Um, so that was kind of a little bit more of my off season, um, where this time I didn't view it. I just viewed it as a few weeks off <laughs> um, and a shorter off season. So it worked out all right. Sure. Thank you so much, Brooke. Thanks, Kent. Thank you, Kent. And thank you for joining us, Brooke. Thank you.